Serious. How's it going? Good. Okay, we're good. Yeah. What are you drinking there? Uh, what am I drinking? Yeah. Um, I think it's Pinot. <laughs> yeah, nice, me too. <laughs> so I think we figured this out. Um, I'm set up outside, trying to keep the glare out as much as we can. So we just go ahead. Yeah, go ahead and get started. Okay. So tonight we're going to taste some of our uh, current release of our Red Mountain Malbec. So this is the 2017 Malbec. And um, so this is typically one of our first wines we release. This was released in January, I believe. So it's been out for a while. It's not um, something that's in a shipment. So I know a lot of people like this, but don't look for it in the shipment unless you're going to add it on to the upcoming shipment. So there's still some inventory of it. Um, just a little bit of a background on the wine itself. We've made this wine since um, 2004 was our first vintage of this. Hard to believe that, but so this, this with this release of the 17, this is our 14th year in a row that we've made Malbec. And so I've got to think that we're one of the first wineries that made Malbec in Washington. Um, my background goes back a little bit further into like the mid nineties from Canoe Ridge estate. We made Malbec, um, a state Malbec from there. And I remember buying a little bit of uh, Malbec from the Den Hodes in the Yakima Valley as well, but it was fairly new, you know, hardly anybody had planted it or anything back in in the mid 90s so um so it's kind of come to be a, a big part of what we do uh people sort of look to us for malbec we not only make this malbec but we make um a vineyard designated malbec from quintessence vineyard also we make a vineyard designated wine from the canyons and many of you have uh, tried that it's real different uh, than, than a Red Mountain Malbec. Um, <clears throat> and then there's other ones that'll come along in the future too. We're looking at from 18, maybe even making an estate Malbec from our estate vineyard right there at Fidelitas. And then one of the components we always use or we've used since about 2013 or so is um, Heart of the Hill Malbec. And we're looking at maybe a vineyard designated wine on from, from Heart of the Hill as well. So, um, if you go back to that very first mile back, 2004, we used um, Snipes Canyon and Stillwater Creek for that first for that first mile back, and we came out with um, we wanted to do something different with the package, and at the time, um, it was really just my brother Lauren and I, and Lauren. Uh, was working for Nike and thought, Hey, let's, let's try this, um, this look that Nike had with one of the Air Jordans that they, they put out. So if you can see the packaging on this, maybe I'll have Will hold it up so I can keep talking, but it's kind of this, um, black on black look. And I know many of you have seen this, if you've bought our wine before, but it's really hard to see the label. Um, and that's exactly how we want it. Um, so I got a little more background information from my brother, Lauren, tonight. And this was actually kind of modeled after the Air Jordan 11s, which when you look back at all the Air Jordans was the most popular Air Jordan that they ever produced. And it had this sort of um, black on black kind of patent leather black look to it. And it's still looked at as one of the you know, the most favorite Air Jordan. So that's that's where the packaging comes from. And so that's kind of our um, background with it a little bit. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about this, this uh, 17. Um, I think I, I just maybe a little bit about the vintage. I really like um, the, the 17 vintage. It's... Um, you know, it was one of those vintage where the, 
where the quantity of the crop was off a little bit. We've talked about this before, but because of uh, a poor set in the spring, um, we didn't have as big a crop, so maybe off 20%. And with that, I think really kind of came a, a tick up in the quality of the of the wine that we were able to make. And that's just what Mother Nature will give us in some vintages like that. So with this particular wine, um, it's 15% from our estate vineyard, uh, 33% from canyons, 27% from Heart of the Hill, and then 25% from Quintessence. So that kind of makes up this uh, 27 or 2017 vintage. We started making Red Mountain wines only the first vintage uh, where it was exclusively Red Mountain was 2013, and that was um, uh, from Scudney Flats and Canyons. So um, maybe just talk a little bit about this wine itself. I mean, what do you think, Will? What do you get out of this? I mean, it's a little uh, um, more fruit forward compared to that 2016, which was a little cooler vintage. Um, 2016, you kind of got more of those traditional kind of spicy earthiness characteristics. 2017, really getting a lot of like dark purple fruit, um, you know, some good baking spices from, you know, that American oak that we tend to use on Malbec. Can you maybe talk about why, why traditionally we do use quite a bit of American oak on Malbec? Yeah, I think it just um, sort of lends itself the flavor profile that we get from Malbec and how it meshes with American oak, which is a little more, a little more aggressive than I would say French oak is, or than American oak or then French oak is, excuse me. So um, we just we just like it. It seems to work uh, better with, especially with uh, warmer climate Malbec, like we see with, um, with Red Mountain. The other thing I can just add to that, just you talked about the difference between 16 and 17. I think more so with than any other variety, Malbec is is reflective generally of where it's grown, the canopy density, the, not, the, the amount of heat. So if you, you could grow Malbec, and I remember this from some of the earlier vintages, when it was grown in a cooler site where we had heavier canopies, it got a lot more kind of vegetative characteristics and a lot of what I call white pepper characteristic. You looked back at that 2004. That's the one thing I really remember about about that wine, and and that was partly just we needed to come down the learning curve a little bit on how we were growing Malbec in the field. And um, I think with this particular wine, you're seeing those you know those um, riper, richer, dark fruit characteristics like you talked about, and that's just reflective of the heat. Uh, on Red Mountain. Um, I think with Malbec, we're seeing how well it grows in a lot of different uh, different areas. Now, we're focused on Red Mountain, but it does extremely well in the Yakima Valley, Waluk Slope, um, as well as Walla Walla, where, there's, where those climates are just a touch um, cooler than what we see on Red Mountain. Yeah, I always like to tell the story um... You know, I went down a couple vintages ago with Andrew Janik to work in Mendoza, which is obviously world famous for growing Malbec. And if you were to drop somebody in the middle of Mendoza or the middle of like the Yakima Valley, you really can tell the difference. The climate and the topography of the land, just how it looks is very similar. So, I mean, like you're saying, Malbec really does and can survive the heat pretty well, um, you know, especially on some pretty extremely hot growing sites like, you know, canyons and quintessence where the vines are just super exposed to the, the heat in the sun. Yeah, for sure. 
This wine is delicious. Yeah, it's showing really well. It's um, this has definitely been in in uh, in bottle for probably close to a year, so it's got plenty of bottle age. Um, as I mentioned before, kind of in the intro, it's you know this this wine is not part of a uh, our release, so you're not gonna. You know, you're not going to see it in these first two releases, but it can be an add-on. And so if you're looking at your your four-bottle shipment, you, you, you know, it's easy just to maybe increase that to six bottles and call it good. A six-pack is, is easy enough to ship for us. So <laughs> I thought I'd throw that in there. Yeah, we actually can't ship four bottles. We have to ship out six at a time, so... Yeah, I think we're all out of those four-bottle shippers. Somebody, uh, somebody named Hillary, you might know her. her, uh, her she won't... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's been asking a lot of questions in these videos we've been doing. Uh, she wants to know if we use different clones of Malbec, like we do different clones of Cabernet. We're pretty much um, using the same clone. I think it's clone nine, if I remember right is pretty much the standard clone that everybody's using in Washington right now. I, I'm starting to see a little variability from that. I think we we saw some Malbec we took from um, Blackwood Canyon had a different clone to it. But as far as I know, it's mostly clone nine in Washington. I wonder um, if she's seeing that they're using a different clone in California of Malbec. Maybe she can answer that. <laughs> yeah. Just ask, just she just have to just ask me the questions. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, it's seventy five degrees here today. It's beautiful. It's uh, hot. We're really starting to see, uh, you know, the buds start to swell. I wouldn't doubt. By this weekend, we'll start to see some variety starting to push some shoots for sure. And this is about normal. It's about, you know, mid-April. We start to see some early varieties start to push things. And that's good. But this is some great weather. We could get up into the almost 80 degrees over the next couple of days, I think. Did Hillary answer? <laughs> She gives some laughing emojis. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, somebody else is asking. I think different between Washington difference between Washington Malbec and French Malbec. I I can't say that I had a lot of Malbec from France, but I have had it. Um, I think it, it's probably just the same sort of differences we see just between, you know, growing Cabernet Sauvignon or Merlot in Washington and what you would see if you grew the same varieties in France. And it's very specific to where you might be growing those grapes, whether it's, you know, in Bordeaux or maybe in the south of France. But it's very, I think it's very um, terroir specific. And so even in Washington, as I mentioned before, where we see you know, cooler sites, it's it's way different than warmer sites, even from within Washington. You don't see as much of a common thread, I think, as you would see with Merlot and, say, Cabernet Sauvignon. Like, if you see those from Yakima Valley, Walla Walla, Walla Slope, and Red Mountain, there's somewhat of a, a common thread. I don't see that sort of same thing as much with Malbec, at least through my experience, which is you know, back in the mid nineties. So <laughs> just a little bit of experience. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. I've seen the same thing with Syrah and Malbec. Like if you're doing a blind tasting with either of those varietals, it's, it's really difficult. Cause, um, you, like you said, even within a small region like Washington, those wines can be all over the map. Yeah. Um, but yeah, compared to French Malbec, 
I mean, this wine is still pretty balanced, but it is still very fruit forward compared to some of those older world, world wines. I think that there's a certain, it's, it's hard to describe, but there's a certain kind of a spicy characteristic that you get from Malbec that you don't get from any other variety. And it's, uh -huh. it's, um, it can be, you know, when a cool, from a cooler side, it can be more peppery, but even from a, a warmer site like this, there's there's a distinctive sort of spiciness to the wine, for sure. Uh, somebody else wanted to know what about a timeline on aging this wine? Obviously, it tastes delicious right now, but what would your recommendation be? I don't think that Malbec. I mean. It doesn't age out as well as um, some other varieties like uh, Cab Sauvin Merlot and even Petit Verdot. So I would say I'd put this in more of a, I'd say three to five, but I mean, you could age it up to seven years or so, I think. But I, I, haven't, I haven't really, I mean, we've tasted some stuff that we've laid down for a long time. But I don't think it's it, – it doesn't um, – I don't have the same feeling about it that I would with, um, you know, like a, a longer-aged-out Merlot or Cab Sauv. So um, I've, always, I've said this before. When we release these wines, we expect them to, to be very drinkable, and everybody has a different theory as to how long they like to lay wines down. But we want the wine – drinkable, consumable when we release it, but yet have some ageability on it. And so um, this certainly has more ageability than um, some of the other vintages we made, particularly 14 and 15, which were really warm. So I think the 17s in general have more ageability than some of the other vintages we made for sure. Um, what about my production assistant is giving me these uh, question cards? Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I'm giving her free wine in, in return. Uh, what about your favorite Malbec food pans? Hmm. Gosh, I wish you would have told me this question beforehand. <laughs> Put you on the spot. Yeah, you know, um, I I think we we've kind of liked it with um, maybe like pasta with some you know some little bit of spicy red sauce you know with it that seems to work really well and that can be we just we just tried a, a red sauce with actually with lentils rather than uh, any you know another kind of protein and it was pretty good liked it. Um, the other thing I, I think it works out well is if um, anything that's grilled, I think that's got some nice spice to it. Um, and hey, maybe, this, what's that? Maybe a certain food truck that we've been known to yeah, work with or have it all of our events. Well with, <laughs> it works pretty well with El Pastor tacos. Yeah. yeah. Uh, gosh, some of those... Um, you know, smoked bricks brisket tacos from Andres would go good with this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anything kind of smoky and spicy, I think, would would be good for sure. Uh huh. Yeah, I mean, it does sound a little cliche, but Malbec really is like the perfect barbecue wine. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. easy to drink in. The tannins aren't, you know, huge on it. So yeah, it's big and bold, but it's not not too tannic. That's for sure. So it can, it's pretty, pretty wide range in what type of food that it can go with. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Other questions? Um, any questions? Any more questions out there? People are saying it's Taco Thursday. It's always good to hear. <laughs> Is there any day um, not Taco Day? Uh, yeah, I have tacos like twice a week, so I'm not the one to ask. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe talk about a little, a little bit about 
Um, you know how Malbec isn't necessarily the prettiest grape oh, when it's yeah. fully ripe in the vineyard, um, and how that can kind of change magically once it gets in the cellar. Yeah, we over the years I've noticed that Malbec seems to kind of um, it, it deteriorates in the in the vineyard um, during harvest. It can really you can get a lot of raisining and um, sometimes it doesn't look very good. And I really remember this at one particular time. Must have been about 2014 or 15. And uh, Hillary and Mitch, Hillary's on watching this right now. Actually, they went out to take a look at the fruit, um, to, to look at the ripening of it. And they came back and uh, they looked at the Malbec at cannons and thought, man, this stuff is in bad shape, you know. Um, I don't know. We might want to take a look at not picking it. And I, I thought, well, let's, let's, let's bring it in and take a look at it. Uh, I've noticed that before that Malbec, it looks kind of rough at times. So we brought it in. And the other thing about Malbec, when it first gets into a tank, all you can really see is the inside of the grape. And it has this sort of neon green look to it and so it's like this when you pick it it's you almost get this by looking at it you think well it's green and it has these green flavors and stuff um but it's not really the case at all almost overnight it just turns just black uh just from the skins just sitting there and um that vintage that we thought that maybe the the fruit was you know, rotten and no good really turned out great. And you really can't tell by the fruit itself. And I, you don't really see that with other varieties at all. I mean, like you pick a white, white grape and it's got rot in it. It usually tastes, you can taste the rot, but it isn't that way with Malbec for whatever reason. And, um, that's a good thing. So, um, that's a little, that's very, very unique to Malbec, at least Washington Malbec. Yeah, because, I mean, you can, especially, like, Red Mountain Cabernet that's hand-picked and you bring it in, it just looks, you know, like it went through a sorting line for a couple hours because all the clusters and yeah, whole thing of it is just absolutely perfect. But Malbec, like you said, for whatever reason, doesn't look too good when it first comes in. But let it sit for 48 hours and you take your first juice samples and it's just super dark and purple and smells like blackberry jam another question do you plan to do 100 percent malbec from the estate yeah it kind of looks that way um you know we only planted the estate vineyard in 2015 and so um we've been waiting for the vines to show enough maturity that um I felt, or we felt as a winemaking team, that the wine quality was high enough that we could consider that. We hadn't seen that until um, 2018. And it looks like we're going to make a small quantity of vineyard designated um, uh, Malbec from the 18 vintage. I believe, if I remember right, it's like, 96 cases, so it's only four barrels, but we feel like it's uh, quality, high enough quality that we're going to do it. So look forward to that, which won't be out for two more years. <laughs> two, two more years. That's the mm -hmm. that's a tough thing about wine is um, we're not making widgets. It doesn't kind of happen overnight. <laughs> Uh, and then maybe talk about the difference between a couple of Malbecs coming out this year, Canyons and Quintessence. Yeah. Um, so Canyons, we don't. It's kind of an every other year thing. Quintessence has now been pretty, yeah, pretty so solid. We, we consider, you know, Canyons when we feel like it's, of a high enough quality that it can make it on its own. And even then we only make about 96 cases. Um, and then 
it always is a part of the Red Mountain Malbec. It's a little more, it's a really interesting block. It's only about an acre, really steep southern slope, great, um, great exposure to the sun. It's almost like a little solar panel, the little block there. Um, but even at that, we don't get the same flavor profile that we get from Quintessence. So it's a little more herbaceous, a little more spicy than what we would see even from our, uh, just from the regular Red Mountain Malbec. And that's kind of fun because it's different. We don't want everything to taste the same. And then when, when we do make it, we're really trying to highlight the unique characteristics of that, that block itself. Now, quintessence is is completely different. So it's um, very concentrated, deep, deep colors, you know, deep purple color, um, very concentrated, you know, and bigger, bigger than we, we would see just from uh, the Malbec off of just a regular Red Mountain Malbec or the, or the Canyons Malbec. And um, re really incredible dark fruit profile and um, kind of intense. Uh, about as intense a Merlot or Malbec as you're going to see anywhere in Washington for sure. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, and, that, and that's all within the same appellation. That's just different sites. Same clone. Yeah. Probably like a mile and a half, a mile away from each other. Yeah. Yeah, but I know we were talking about doing a vineyard, like a vineyard shoot in Quintessence for next week, but I swear some of those blocks in Quintessence, especially the southern facing ones, are like some of the hottest places you can be in Washington yeah. during the middle of the summer. Just because it's rocky and just super exposed yeah and there's some elevation to some blocks and uh, good good continuous south facing pretty pretty you know some in some cases fairly steep slopes so mm -hmm. yeah we have a question you might know this guy nolan sportelli heard of him yeah one of your former baseball <laughs> baseball players yeah <laughs> nice guy yeah he's selling beer now yeah <laughs> he wants to know how long in barrel for this wine and whether you use french or american oak i think that we used um mostly used french oak i think and we usually we're not looking at a lot of um new wood into Malbec because we don't want it to overwhelm it, overwhelm it, but just, just enough to give it a little bit of a uh, mouthfeel kind of viscosity that you get from the oak itself. And I believe that this one was in barrel for about 20 months. So, but mostly, mostly new, uh, mostly uh, used barrels, but that can be used once. So there still is some, oak characteristic with it so when i say used once for this this uh wine that would have been a barrel that would have been new in 2015 aged the 2015 and then was available to go into with the 2017 vintage so only once used but used for 22 months is mm -hmm. that is that right yeah. do you remember the barrel regime on it <laughs> i thought you had the notes I, I think, yeah. yeah, thanks for just throwing that back at me. Um, um, I, I think it, we, it, it's a conscious, conscious decision, not with this particular wine, to really use any, any new wood at all because we just like, we don't want the wood to overwhelm this wine in particular. Um, I know with Quintessence, I think we're using a little bit of uh, new American oak in it. Mm hmm yeah, I think it's, like you said, usually less than 50% new oak, and it's usually, there. thanks, Jess, for bailing us out. Uh, it's usually, like, equal parts American and French, but always in total less than 50%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty consistent for Malbec. 
thanks for the question, Nola. <laughs> Anything else? All right. Um, as I mentioned before, the wine is available. <laughs> so just get a hold of us if you you want to order some. You don't have to wait for your shipment. We would uh, we would send this wine to you separate if you wanted it right away. <laughs> um, and I think that that can be done either through just emailing us at wine at fidelitaswines.com or um, just calling us uh, on the 509-554-9191 number. Or just send Will a message directly. Yeah, just, <laughs> don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Go just DM them. us on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, we miss seeing everybody, but um, this will this will be over before we know it. We'll be back. Uh, we'll be at, hopefully we'll be back open fairly soon. Don't want to say any date that might be, but um, it'll be good to see everybody again. And uh, thanks for uh, jumping on Instagram and watching. Yeah, thank you, guys. We'll see you again next week, same time. Okay, bye. Cheers.